I'm Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, and um, we like to say that we help our clients generate buzz without getting it done. And uh, what that means for our clients is we'll help them build out and do the things that they need to do on the web and in social media without locking them in to things that they don't want to do or forcing them to do something that's wasteful or getting them or allowing them to do something that might harm their, harm their image. So that's what we mean by generate buzz without getting stung. Make sure that my thing works. Okay, my thing. There we go. Um, my agenda for today is to go through a little bit about BusyWeb and who we are, how to project the right image, of course, but then that means how to set your strategy, how to build the right website, how to brand it, and how to get found with search engines and social media. And do this in a way that you're working all in one spot instead of having to go and publish on Facebook and then on Twitter and then on LinkedIn and then bounce back and forth. We're going to teach you how to do this in one fell swoop. It's going to be a little bit fun. What we do at BusyWeb is gorgeous, fantastic web design. We build our sites so that you can update your stuff. Is Office Center on there? Yes, it is. Beautiful. Um, New Business Minnesota will be on there very soon, Pat. And uh, we're going to have, we have uh, just a bunch of really fun designs, and we work with brilliant companies to help them get the word out on what they do. And when we do that, we actually interleave that with social media. So when you publish on a busy web website, you're also publishing with that same click on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. We'll integrate Pinterest, if that's the market that you're going for. We'll integrate YouTube videos so that everything works together. And so you don't waste your time online, because it's important to spend as much time as you can purposefully online, because otherwise you'll find yourself on Facebook goofing around with mafia wars or planning turnips or whatever people do on, on Facebook nowadays, right? So the way that looks for us is we'll build a gorgeous website, but then you'll be up on, busy, on um, Facebook. And this is what a timeline-oriented Facebook page looks like. And if you haven't spent any time on Facebook in a while, you're missing out and you probably have a big blank spot at the top of your Facebook page. And you have a lot of marketing opportunity that you can use now to help push it forward. Your LinkedIn company page, you need to have all of your stuff on LinkedIn so that people can follow your company and anytime you publish news or information, it automatically shows up on LinkedIn for you as well. And then of course Twitter, the one that not a whole lot of folks really understand that much, um, is also out there and you really need to have your own Twitter accounts and make sure that you spend a little bit of time to put your name on there, your image, and customize your background so that you're projecting the right image to your folks. You know, the folks that don't have any icon at all on Twitter, it's an egg, right? So we call them eggheads. Now, you don't want to be an egghead on Twitter. Nobody will follow you. So we'll pull that together for you as well. So let's talk about setting your strategy. The key things that you need to know, and if you're interested in walking through this with us, we have a few of these sheets in the back of the room and we can help you with that, but you need to answer some key questions about yourself and your customers before you start doing things in social media and on the web. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time. So the two big things to know are yourself, your company, and your customer. And by that, I mean you need to know who you are as a company your unique selling proposition, your USP to us marketing geeks, so that you can say, this is where I'm better than my competition. This is what I do. You know, people that sell drill bits, what are they selling to their customers? Holes, right? What's the hole that you fulfill <coughs> for your clients? Build on that and then use that as a draw to bring them in and to work with them. Once you have those two things down, that'll help you to fill out your social keywords. This is the same thing as search engine optimization or SEO. You want to figure out from your customer's perspective, and again, your absolute best customer, the one that if you had 10 more of those, you would be set for the year, and your low-hanging fruit customers, the ones that you can sell five, six times a day. So for those customers, who are you and what can you do for them better than anybody else? For those keywords, you get behind their, you get in their head. You say, okay, how do they search for us? Like for BusyWeb, it's, Web design and social media in Minnesota is one of our keywords, but it's also Twitter integration or Facebook integration or search engine optimization, right? It's kind of weird SEOing for SEO, but we have to do that because what we do. So building that out and getting into their head, you want to sit, use those key phrases really in everything that you do. So you need to publish on your Facebook updates with those keywords. 
your LinkedIn, your Twitter, and basically if you think about it, every conversation that you have on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, on your website should be akin to that conversation that you have when somebody that you've just met asks you, what do you do? You don't launch right in and say, well, I sell websites, and I can tell by your, the, your haircut, Colleen, that you probably need to have a website. You, know, you don't say that to people, but people make that, they make that mistake all the time in social media. They go in and they mix it up with direct mail, which is a mass marketing medium, and they say, well, I need to get my sales message out every single time I talk to people. You want to help people more than you sell people in social media, so it's really important to build that out. And using those keywords makes it really easy for you to be found on what you do. So then once you figure out your social keywords, it's going to be really easy to figure out what tools you should be using. So if you're looking for 18 to 34 year olds, you know, Twitter is probably a good handle. If you're looking for 35 to 49 year olds, you know, Facebook, unbelievably, is a really great option. They just surpassed 900 million now. And as everybody knows, it's been looking at the news, they're going up for IPO this week yet. So it's going to be very, very interesting for Facebook for a while. Um, Pinterest, um, 35 to 49 year old women, like 75 to 80 percent of folks on Pinterest are women. Um, very visual medium, and if you have something that's visual and exciting, you have tremendous opportunity in Pinterest. Um, and then you need to know how to measure what you're doing so that you can get the results that you're looking for out of it. So, you have to know where your needle is right now to know if you're moving it. And the key is, are you moving the needle? If someone tries to sell you a website and says, I guarantee you so many hits, or I guarantee you to get to the top of the list in Google. I was on a panel with somebody with, at Google last week, and they said, if somebody tells you that in SEO, run away. I work for Google, and I can't guarantee that you'll be on the front page of Google. Because if somebody wants to, pe to spend more, or if they have more horsepower, it's going to be hard to do. But make your keywords relevant, and make the stuff that you do targeted, so that you find exactly the right person, and you're going to get the results that you need. You know, are the results that you need butts and seats? To get people at conferences like this to share your message. Is it selling a specific item? Is it getting more people on your marketing list, so that you can continue to reach out to them and build that community and that trust so that when it comes time to make that decision for a purchase, they're willing to pull the trigger. That's the kind of stuff that you have to build toward in social media and on the web. And then of course, know who, know who can help. And I know a guy in a bright yellow shirt that could probably help. <laughs> All right. So once we build that up, you need to listen before you leap in social media. So there are some tools up here in, um, in uh, the text, search.twitter.com. You don't even need to have a Twitter account to take advantage of this. You go to search.twitter.com and search for your company. Search for some of those magic keywords that we identified before. So for me, it would be Facebook business, right? And see what people are saying about that. If you're feeling gutsy, get on your Twitter account and answer them and say, fantastic. Here's another thing that you might want to consider. Build some of that relationship with the people that matter most for you. Um, Google Alerts are brilliant. If you need to know what a Google Alert is, my best advice is to Google it. It's really easy to do. You just sign up and you get an email anytime your keyword shows up on the web. So you probably don't want to add the as a Google Alert keyword. You're going to get hit with a lot. Or even Facebook, right? You'll get hit with a million things. Um, advanced Facebook and LinkedIn searches are brilliant ways to reach out and really find the people that you need and to find what they're talking about and then you can enter into the conversation. It's like eavesdropping at a cocktail party so that you can see what a good place to be to jump into the conversation. So once you get all of that, you need to take the first step. Set up your accounts. All of these new technologies that are coming out, like Pinterest for example, it won't hurt you to set up an account. You don't have to do a, month, do a whole lot with it, but especially like with Twitter and Facebook, People are swooping in and grabbing the URLs now for people, like on Twitter in particular. You know, somebody, um, Netflix, changed their name for a very brief moment in time. They didn't realize that somebody already had the name of their new company. I forget what it was. Does anybody remember what that Netflix name was? Quickster. Quickster, yes. And Quickster happened to be on Twitter, this intense stoner that had a picture of the Domino's Noid for his, um, for his icon. So I was like, dude, got totally baked last night, and this is what Quickster was, was associated with. 
So they kind of changed their name back to Netflix after that. But imagine the power of one little thing and not checking that stuff. So make sure that you get your accounts. Once you get them, be sure to pull all the way through and get that social media plan written down so that everybody's moving in the right direction. You've got some people on your team, you've got friends, you've got compatriots. Make sure that they're all helping you do what you need to do. And then build that out in a great way so that everything connects and that you're inviting people in. Because no matter if, if you're hitting people on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or Pinterest, you need to connect probably in many of those because people prefer to be connected with in different ways and via different tools. So no matter how fantastic or gorgeous your website is, I am going to guarantee that nobody's going to barge, barge up first thing in the morning and fire up your website the first thing in the morning. But they're going to check on Facebook. And if you happen to have posted something brilliant on Facebook that day and they follow you, it's going to show up in their feed. And that's another touch and that's another way that you can be referred to the people that matter most. So, once you get into there, just do it. And if you can't do it yourself, find somebody who can, and I know somebody that does. The key thing to look out for is you want to watch out for people that try to sell you everything, that claim that they're experts, that say that they're going to get you to number one in the Google search results, um, or say, you know, with one low, low fee, you can do X, Y, or Z. Ask a lot of questions, ask them what their strategy is, what their plan is, and then build from there. You want, to, you want somebody that's going to be your partner in this and help you grow because it's a conversational medium. And it's really hard to tell, unless you're actually doing something, what the results you're gonna get are. So, measure, rinse, and repeat. All of this stuff is marketing. So this is the BusyWeb website in here, but we connect with Facebook, and Twitter, and LinkedIn, and um, advertising, Yellow Pages we don't do so much, word of mouth, video, direct mail, <coughs> magazines, Google of course, Foursquare, you name it. All of that stuff interconnects. Make sure that you build all of this and let everyone know where, you're, where you are everywhere else you are. So on your direct mail, make sure that you have follow us, find us on Facebook or like us on Facebook. Be sure you include your, on your business cards, your social media um, addresses so that they can find you at facebook.com slash busyweb. And then they can connect with you. You know, Dairy Queen has this now. They have a big thumbs up right on the front door of Dairy Queen and say, like us on Facebook and that you get special deals and offers. It's all about building an ongoing re relationship with people and making it worth something to them. And then remind those folks however they can find you. All right, so rule of thumb for social media, it's not about sell, sell, sell. It's about help, help, help. So be there and help people. Give a little bit of what you know away. You know, in, if, if you do a lot of um, social, or a lot of in work or meet space networking, you know, when, you, when somebody asks you what you do, you don't launch right into your sales pitch. You ask them, well, what do you do? And then you have a natural conversation. That's what social media should be like. Knowing your target market and your return on input, because social media is really hard to peg down for an actual price. You know, return on investment. It's the return on investment of a business card, right? So you've got this networking tool. You hand this out to 75 people. It costs you 13 cents a card. So what's your ROI of that if one of them hits? It's kind, of hard to, it's kind of hard to measure. But if you can build it out so that you're actually doing something and you have a mix of content, so a third of it is about you and about sharing your ideas, a third of it is connecting with articles and ideas, and then a third of it is having conversations with other people, you're going to be a lot better off than if you just go through the quote of the day book and publish something witty that has nothing to do with your business. People will get bored with that very quickly. And they'll also get bored with getting sold all the time. So if you're just going to publish your deals and offers, there's probably a better tool out there for that. All right, your website needs to be the hub for all of this because the social media rules change all the time. I was giving a talk just uh, three weeks ago now about Google+, and as I was giving the talk on Google+, and sharing how the tool works, I clicked a button, went into a setting, and I came back and the entire thing looked different. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, well, I don't, I don't know what I clicked. It turns out Google Plus completely redesigned in the middle of my presentation. I haven't recorded. I broke it first. It was awesome. <laughs> so they do that all the time. Facebook is another perfect example. They changed all of the rules. People used to be able to set up beautiful landing pages for Facebook on your page so that if somebody had not clicked like yet, 
you could show them something that was a big graphic that said, you know, like us for special deals and offers, blah, 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 blah. And they took that away. So a handful of our companies had spent a fair amount of money getting a perfect landing page going, and then Facebook said, eh, sorry, and they switched the rules. You can still do it, but now you got to pay them money. It's not free anymore. You can do it with ad revenue. So this is where people are going to look for you. If they find you on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, they're going to look for you on your website. And if you have a brilliant marketing campaign that everybody's looking at and everybody's driving toward, and you have a lackluster website, it's just accelerating the process of people thinking you're a bozo. So don't do that. Right? Make sure that you have it as part and the center of your marketing hub. When you have this, be sure you push toward that call to action. In branding and in life, you need to give people a way to connect with you. Tell them what you want them to do next. There's a big uh, QR code on, um, on the BusyWeb website or on the banner back there too. And on your sheets actually, there's a little sheet, if you hold up the half sheet, it has a little picture of a bee in a very fuzzy text that's a QR code. You scan that, it takes you to this form where you can fill out a request form to have us analyze your website, analyze your social media, and tell you what you could be doing better. It's free and it's easy, and you can take it with to anybody else that you want and make it into something awesome. That's a call to action. Make sure that you give your clients, customers, prospects a way to go more, a way to do more with you once they already are. So, building your brand, answer these questions. Why do your customers choose you? What do you do better than anybody else? And make it clear who you are and what you do. We covered this in strategy, but you need to know who you are in order to be able to spell that out and to give people that next step in working with you. So build that. Build a great website, of course. A great domain is really important. You know, if you have, um, especially on, on emails, I have a client right now and, and he knows it, I give him a hard time about it all the time, but it's Bob's Repair at AOL.com. As soon as you say AOL.com, everybody snickers, right? So we're getting him off of that. He's got his own domain. It's going to be beautiful. But it needs to project the right image. Having a Gmail account or a Hotmail account as your primary business tells people that you can't be bothered to take the $10 it would take to get your own email account. It can be cheap and easy. It just takes a couple of steps. So be sure to spend time on that. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at building a website, especially if you want to do it in a very cost-effective and leveraged way, I highly recommend WordPress. You can do this for free at WordPress.com. You can build this up. WordPress was started as a blogging platform, so it's incredibly easy to use. You can actually set it up so that you can just send yourself an email and it'll update your website. And if you do it right, it can cross-post to all of the networks that I've been talking about. So pick a tool that works for you and to make it work. And then for content tips, you know, just look at what your competition is doing. That's where that search thing comes up, right? Be sure that you build it and that you do it in such a way that you're giving them that next step. And then focus on your unique benefit and what you can do better than anybody else. You need to also make sure you can be found. Who here has a Google Places account? You signed on to Google Places? Uh, I heard a tip and the Google guy told me, please don't tell anybody this, so I'm going to tell you all right now. Um, Google Places is kind of stepping back and taking a back seat to Google Plus now. They're going to integrate Google Places with Google Plus. The key thing that you need to know is there are ways via things like Google Places, um, write, that, write this down because I didn't put it in the presentation, getlisted.org, G-E-T-L-I-S-T-E-D, will tell you all of the accounts that you can register for that will help you edge out your competition versus people that are physically further away than you. So with Google Places, that's the cool thing about it. If somebody's spending a ton of money and time on search engine optimization on their website, but you're closer to them physically, if you're in the same city, you're going to show up above them just because you're closer. Especially if you're a brick and mortar store. So it's a great place to find that out. And Get Listed will tell you like 12 different places that you can do that for. You just click on the button. Use your domain for all of your emails. We already talked about this, but then make sure to list all of your contact info on your business cards. And more than just email, everything that you can do to connect with them, where they prefer to be connected with, is where you should go. Okay, 
I'm very wordy today, and I want to be sure to get, get on to the rest of the team, so I'm going to skip through this really fast, and we can talk more about this back at the back table. Um, but let's talk through your social media toolbox. This is like 10 seconds, 15 seconds of pop, so get ready. Facebook. That's not me, I promise. You need a profile to get a Facebook page. The key thing is, if you have more than 25 fans, go to facebook.com slash username and book your own domain. Ideally, it should be the same thing as your URL for your website. BusyWebs is busy web, or facebook.com slash busyweb. Invite, invite and suggest people in, and be sure that you spend some time on getting your timeline set up. I can email this to anybody that posts on my Facebook page asking for it, hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, 851 pixels by 315 is what you get on the top for your timeline photo. You know, kind of make sure that it's just horizontal and you'll be fine. But then you need um, 180, actually it's 125 by 125 now, because they just changed that again, um, for your little icon. So make sure that you're doing that. And then tab images are the little tabs that go across the bottom. That's what you need to know about Facebook for now. Pinterest, you need to know that it's driving more traffic than anywhere else other than Facebook right now, more than LinkedIn, more than YouTube, to people's websites. There's 17.8 million active users as of last month. It's growing like gangbusters, and it's a visual medium. Basically, if you can share a video or an image, Pinterest lets you do that. And uh, there's a little graph up here that nobody can read, so I'll see. Um, in order to get in, you need to request an invite. BusyWeb can also give you an invite if you're interested, because we have a bunch of them, so just connect up with us. Um, but pins and boards, it's like a virtual scrapbook. So you post all of the things that you love, or if you're shopping for a house, all the cool house-related stuff that you can find. For businesses, it can be a brilliant tool if you have a lot of goods and services that are shareable or that relate to you. LinkedIn, we all kind of know this. It's how to connect. It's how to brand. It's how to reach out to people in a corporate way. They used to say that LinkedIn was Facebook for adults. More adults are on Facebook than LinkedIn. It's Facebook for professionals for people that are looking to just do business. If you do LinkedIn, make sure that you get a company page. You need to set this up, and that way people can browse your services, and they can see who's on your team, and up here they can follow you and see anytime you make an update to your website. If they're on LinkedIn, they'll see this if they follow you. It's brilliant marketing and a great way to stay connected with professionals. Twitter, nobody really understands Twitter. Um, it's short little 140 character messages, and you create your bio, make sure that you customize it, make sure that you make it yours. You can do this for free, and there's lots of tools out there. Um, you, can short, or you can shorten the process by talking to somebody that knows how to do it, but the key is integrate your accounts. You get one other URL on your Twitter profile, link it to somewhere that's going to be a catch-all for everything else. So whether that's LinkedIn, whether it's your website's contact us page, whether it's your blog, because that's where you spend all your time, be sure you use that and leverage it. Power uses, I'm going to skip over this, but be sharing, be helpful. Don't tweet about your ham sandwich or what Mittens just did. You know, make sure that you're helpful and useful and answer people's questions online, and you will be fine in Twitter. Integration, put all of this stuff together. There's some really cool consolidation tools like um, TweetDeck, which is kind of being phased out because Twitter bought it and they're starting to remove some of the cool stuff on it. Hootsuite is also very, very cool and it allows you in one fell swoop to post to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. They're working on getting Google Plus in there. They haven't gotten um, Pinterest in yet, but it's a great way to integrate some of those key accounts. And my favorite way to do it is to do it via WordPress or via your website. Again, when you publish to a busy web powered, WordPress powered website, It'll go out on LinkedIn, it'll go out on Facebook, it'll go out on Twitter. You can integrate all of this stuff and just do it once. There's so much wasted time out there. Do it the right way and reach out and be proactive. That's not to say that that's the only place that you should interact. You shouldn't just use your website, but it sure takes, takes a lot of time out of the daily interactions that you have. Here's how BusyWeb can help. We create optimized websites for social content. We love helping people with social media. We will write for you for a little monthly fee and help you get things put together. And if you're confused or if it's overwhelming on how do I do all this stuff, we can guide you through that. Every Wednesday at noon, we have a free webinar for anyone that's interested. And we have, we have a lot of the Office Center folks that actually log in. Lee is there almost every week, bless her. 
She has great questions for us. She tries to stump us all the time. Um, it's a three hour long webinar that we take a deeper dive into Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. Last week it was social strategy. Next week it's going to be company pages on LinkedIn again. So we do that and then we just do general Q&A on that. Um, if you like the message, if you like hearing this, if, uh, if you think that another group might be useful to hear this or might, might get some benefit out of this, I love talking if you can't talk. So I'd love to, to get a chance to talk to your Rotary Club or your BNI group. Um, and then finally, please fill out on your sheets or on, in, your, in your laps there, you have a buzz report request form. If you're curious about any of this stuff, first, if you're kind of geeky and you have a, a smartphone, you can snap a picture of Buzz, the guy up here, and uh, that will take you right to this form online, so you don't actually have to go through the pain of moving a pen on the paper, right? Or just fill this out and drop it on the back, and one of our team will actually walk through where your search engine results are kind of heading, heading you, what your usage is, and tell you where you could grow and give you some real handy tips to the six page proprietary report that we do that'll help you grow your business. Thank you very much for your time and your help and we will catch you after this. Thanks.